Welcome back everyone to the Ready or Not lore series, where in today's episode, we will discuss the new and improved map, Brixley's Talent Time. This video will be divided up into two sections, the first being all in-game slash developer confirmed information, and the second being my own theories as to where the story and world may go in the future. Assets points us to the owner operating in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Los Sueños, the Row. SWAT have been deployed to serve a warrant on Brixley Talent Time to assist in the investigation of an illicit CP ring. Our prime suspect is George Brixley, the owner and quote unquote talent scout for Brixley Talent Time. Formerly an officer in the Army Signal Corps, Brixley was sent to Leavenworth on kidnapping and sexual assault charges. Following his release, Brixley set up operations in the poorest neighborhood in Los Sueños. There are also numerous unknown disguised individuals seen on site. There are also potential civilians on site, as officers on the scene were able to secure several children who were inside the building. It seems they were let go by the suspect for unknown reasons. However, there are more than likely many civilians still inside the building. With suspects and civilians out of the way, let's listen to the mission briefing. All right, everybody ready to roll. So, if you guys haven't been told yet, CID finally received the decrypted metadata from those marked Mindjot drives that we seized a week or so ago. The data from the images on the drives corroborates information our guys have put together on a small operation running out of the row. We're heading over to 7408 Martinez Boulevard with a warrant for the arrest of George Brixley. Current intel, our target has a prior conviction for kidnapping. Did some time in Leavenworth? About three years. He also has a prior felony for conspiracy and sexual assault. He's not going to want to go back to jail. Brixley has firearms training, and we assume he's going to be armed. The structure we will be entering has some quirks to it. Jackson, the intel you gathered last night, what's up with this place? He's running some sort of talent agency, round the clock and all week. Weekends are his busiest times, so minimum one female in the building. Likely more. Could be children, too. Okay, so we could have kids in there. Moving on, the structure has three known entrances. One on the main road, side one, that goes through the reception. One on the third side of the building, and one on the fourth side. We don't know much about the internal space. Floor plans we've got are from the former owners of the building, who had it set up as a clinic. Speaking of clinics, medical. We'll have RAs on scene, as well as pediatric ambulances in case there are any kids. Primary hospital is going to be YMH. Secondary, if we have multiple patients, is going to be Coastal Grove Medical Center. For radio, we're going to be operating on TAC-5 Central Tactical. Make sure your radios are set to TAC-5. Backup channel is going to be TAC-1. Okay, question time. Anyone? What's our go for use of NFDDs? Interior deployment is authorized based on assessed need. Bang a room if you have to. Anyone else? Perfect. All right, let's go. Remember to watch your mouth. Everything is being recorded. All the time. So, just reiterating what we already know, Brixley is holed up in his talent agency, after the LSPD discovered his involvement in scrubbing the Mindjot hard drives. Arriving on scene, looking around, quietly and respectfully, entering the Talent Time building, we find very few new things. First and foremost, the titular character of George Brixley now sports a new design, more closely related to the concept art we've previously seen. The Bolton security guys have new lines, one of which states, Call God. my boss. His name is Amos Vol. Entry team to He'll talk. Clear it up. Which further seals the connection between Brixley and Vol. The other major change to this map is the inclusion of new recordings. Two cameras and two recorders can now be found in the signing room, the connecting door that leads to the alleyway outside, the smile room, and Brixley's office. So let's listen to them. Hello, George. My name is Dr. Davis. Nice to meet you. Now, before we get started, you don't have to worry about a thing. Our sessions are all covered. You see me pulling out my fucking wallet? <laughs> uh, good one. Uh, so, after looking at your history, it looks like you've had some sessions as a child. How did that go? Fucking stupid. Waste of time, never again. 
what? You're here now? Well, Doc, so are you. Looks like neither of us has a choice. You're good with the snappy one-liners. You could be on TV. Well, I was on TV a long time ago. When I was a kid, small roles, commercials. What happened with that? I didn't see anything like that listed in the history. Wasn't for me. Why's that? Doesn't matter. Are we done here? Okay, it's recording. I'm Cowboy George, and this is the Wacky Wild West. We got us a stagecoach, too. George? Why, why is your friend here? Why aren't you at school? Well, Mom said I could stay home and make a movie. You have to go to school, son. Come on, take that off. I'm taking you boys back. But... Now, George. <sighs> All right, kid. From the top. I don't like this movie. I don't care. Stay the line. I don't want to. Stay the fucking line! I'm Cowboy George, and this is the Wacky Wild... God damn it! No! You know what? Get out of here! Tell your mom to come in! How you feeling today, George? Better? You tell me. I'm still fucking here. Classic. I think we made some good progress last time. Let's keep that going. So, you spent some time in the military before getting discharged. It seems there was an incident involving a fellow female officer. Why don't you tell me what happened? Nothing happened. That's not what it says here. Well, what it says there is made up bullshit. I'm telling you what I told everyone else. I'm good if I you are. I didn't do anything. Can I go now? All right. But I can't help you until you help me. Talking doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, good one, Doc. So, Brixley becomes a much more complicated character. After getting out of prison, Brixley was more than likely court-ordered to see a therapist named Dr. Davis. As we can hear, he's very opposed to the whole thing, with their conversations mostly involving Brixley refusing to even engage with the doctor. However, when the doctor was joking about Brixley being an actor, he mentioned he did some minor acting as a child, then quickly refused to discuss it further, stating it wasn't for me. He is also in denial of his imprisonment, stating he didn't assault his fellow soldier and it was all made up. Listening to the first camera, we learn Brixley skipped school with his friend to make a home movie called Cowboy George, but is caught by his father. The next camera tells us Brixley is still holding on to that Cowboy George story and is forcing kids to reenact it when auditioning at his agency. Other than that, there's nothing new I could find, so let's move to the evidence. Starting with pamphlets from the early 2000s, it explains the purpose of Brixley's building, that being Martinez's safe injection site, and its value to the city. The pamphlet itself reads, Here to stay for the good of Los Sueños, clinics have been applied across our fair state. Our goal is to decrease the number of addicts who become infected by blood diseases and viruses, improving the quality of life of homeless people across America. Next, we have a leather-bound scheduling book with tattered edges, documenting appointments at Brixley Talent Time. The documentation is for the month of February. Forensic analysis of the writing points towards a likelihood that it was written by Brixley. The biggest thing of note here is that on February 28th, Bolton Security showed up for their headshot collections, to which Brixley notes, hopefully AV likes it. Finally, we have a crumbled letter discovered in a dumpster outside of Brixley Talent Time. Inside, a cryptic letter has been carefully flattened out. A series of wax seals are visible on the letter. The letter includes a series of linked wax seals with cryptic images. The images on the seal include such things as a dead dog, a burning man, a redwood tree, and a boat on a dock. The words on the letter are a jarbled mess, but some words on the edges of the paper are clear. Staircase, authority, vol, eye, control, sticks, and Brixley. And that is it for the updates on this map, but there are quite a few things we need to talk about. Let's start with Brixley. So, when Brixley tells his therapist he acted as a kid, to which the therapist states he had no record of that, I believe this implies that Brixley's quote-unquote acting was his home movie, Cowboy George. It was nothing official, and was just something he made on his own. Maybe he actually wanted to be an actor, but his potentially abusive parents beat the idea out of him. But somewhere deep down, he still wanted to be Cowboy George, which is why he forces the role onto the auditioning children. Brixley then grows up and enters the Army Signal Corps, which are responsible for managing communications and information systems. They also play a crucial role in providing and maintaining communication infrastructure, including radios, satellites, computer networks, and other forms of communication technologies. This right here is where Brixley's usefulness to Vol becomes apparent. Anyone with a skill set in communication and information systems definitely knows how to hide a few things. 
This gives me an idea of how Vol met Brixley. Potentially, after getting out of prison, Brixley got a job with Bolton Security. I assume these guys probably don't have any gripes with hiring ex-cons and definitely would not turn down someone with Brixley's skill set. Brixley could have then been assigned to watch over Vol in Los Sueños. Over time, the two could have become friends. Vol lets Brixley in on what he's been doing or even wants to do, prompting Brixley into lending his skill set. Setting up a fake talent agency in the worst part of town, Vol would then use Brixley to provide him with pictures of kids, send the files to an encrypted server at Mindjot, and probably establish hidden communications with criminal organizations across the world, most likely Romania, as we can find a package addressed there in Vol's house. Brixley became a lot more integral to the whole story. At first, I assumed he was nothing more than some creep agent working for Vol. Now we know he's military trained and incredibly good at managing communication and information systems. His usefulness to Vol is also probably exploited by others. And these others leads me to the next point, that being the crumbled up letter we find. The wax seal shows a dead dog, a burning man, redwood tree, and a boat on a dock. The words on the edges of the paper state, staircase, authority, Vol, I, Control, Styx, and Brixley. Starting with the seals, I believe each represents a different map. Dead Dog is the diner, as we can find one there. A Burning Man, according to the evidence on the map, is the meth house. Redwood Tree is more than likely Gerard's place. And a boat on a dock is either Port Hoken, for obvious reasons, or the Border Reserve, as we can find a boat on a dock at the end of that mission. As for the text, Staircase, Authority, Vol, I, Control, Styx, and Brixley, some are straightforward and others a tad difficult. Vol and Brixley are obvious. Authority, I, and Control all seem like something to do with Gerard, as he referred to all three of those things, but Staircase and Styx, I'm at a loss. Styx may also have something to do with the Border Reserve, because that dock I mentioned earlier is connected to an underground river, and Styx, spelt S-T-Y-X, is most likely a reference to the River Styx. As for Staircase, it could be a reference to a number of things, so I'm not too sure on that one. Other than that, I'm not sure what these could be referencing. I tried taking the first letter of every word, that being S-A-V-E-C-S-B, which doesn't really spell anything other than save CSB, which, as far as I can tell, doesn't relate to anything as of now. Whatever it may be, I do find it interesting the wax seal relates to multiple maps, a handful of which either connect to the spider or the USIA or, I guess, potential relations to the USIA when speaking about the diner. This makes me wonder if there are deeper connections between these maps than I previously thought. Whatever these connections may be, things just got a hell of a lot more complicated. 